What's going on, Pokemon Go trainers? Welcome to episode 117 of Lured Up, the podcast where we take Pokemon Go way more seriously than we do ourselves. Lured Up is part of the Pokemon Professor Network, and today is Friday, February 7th, 2020. I'm your host, Ken Pescatore, joined by my co-host, Adam Tuttle. Adam, hello. How are hey, you? Hey, how's it going? What's up? What's good? I am Welcome good. Welcome to the How show. Are you? Yes. We're recording a little early. The gun show. Uh, because the gun show, that is. The gun show. This is the gun show. Welcome um, to Yeah, we're the recording a little show. early because there's. it's been an awesome week. There's been a lot going on, and uh, it's definitely worth talking about it now before shit changes because that's typically what happens in the podcast world. This game moves so damn fast that you have to kind of stay up on it. Otherwise, you release something and it's it's old. It's old news. So I wanted to make sure that we recorded and uh, got ahead of some of the news that's going on right now. Uh, but on today's show, we're going to talk about the Sinnoh celebration that started today. Uh, Pokemon Day has been announced as far as what's coming to the game. We knew this was coming. We, you know, in addition to all that February stuff we talked about last week, you know, now we know there's going to be additional shit going on at the end of the month. We'll review all of that. Big news this week was a major, major exploit that was found in the Go Battle League that pretty much broke the shit out of the the whole system and turned the community upside down and and against each other like it usually does. And Niantic, (laughs) I got to, I got to, you know what? I got to give him a little golf clap, a little golf clap for Niantic for uh, doing what they did. And uh, yeah, we'll we'll talk about all that shit because it was, it was an amazing, amazing, amazing turnaround. And uh, we'll break all that shit down. Uh, new shadow Pokemon are in the game, including new uh, shinies, potentials from the leaders. And then uh, we have a- another spicy poke the bear segment. This has been a lot of fun. And if you're following along on Twitter, um, it's been hella active. So it's it's really good. We're getting a lot of different people jumping in on the conversation. A lot of people sharing it, retweeting it, and and spreading the reach of, of the conversation. And it's been awesome. So we have a lot to review there. And then we're going to wrap up with a Tornadus raid guide and battle party. We talked last tornadus. week that it's here. So, uh, tornadus. Tornadus. So now we'll, uh, we'll talk about t- t- torna- Tornadus. It's, uh, and it's fucking crazy windy in Jersey. It was Tornadus was came to town. That's know, what's going dude, on. I'm, that's what I said. I, we're, we went to the movies and we're like walking from the car to the movie, the movie theater and like my son weighs nothing and he was literally getting blown all over the place like left and right it was fucking nuts he's like dad this is crazy oh like, yeah i know tornadoes has been added to pokemon go that's what, <laughs> that's what it is he was cracking up i forgot what he said he goes oh who, who does i forgot who he said one of his one of his favorite youtubers uh, that does Pokemon. Maybe it was Ando. He was like, "Oh yeah, Thunderous is is uh, is Ando's, you know, un- unlisted leaf." He goes, "I think that's his favorite Pokemon." So it was cool. Like uh, my son was all about it, knew about the forces of nature. I was so proud. <laughs> but all right, let, let's dig into the Sinnoh celebration. So Adam, did you did you have any opportunity to play today? This was the event that started at eight a.m. local time today. Did you did you I catch did. any pokes? I did. My son had a a two hour delay, so I brought him to school at the regular time, and was like, "Oh." There's nobody here. <laughs> Looked at my phone and was like, Ooh, okay, back home it is. <laughs> but when I did drop him off, I did go out and I did play for about an hour and a half. And it was all right. I caught a lot of hip, hip hop, a dust, hip, 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 hip hop, but hip, hip, darn hip, you, you gave him the easy ones. No, I had a lot of fun. I caught a lot of Pokemon. I think I did a clink raid. It wasn't anything to write home about. I didn't get a good IV. And I was like, man, I haven't seen any shinies. And I haven't had a shiny yeah, well, for a while. So I'm just like, all right. It, I thought I was going to get a hip It's a different hip-hop-a-dus. pool of Pokemon, but it's not increased rates. You can't expect increased rates. Yeah, but I was just expecting something for being out that long and hitting oh a bunch of stops. And... Stop expecting things. Listen, Doesn't listen. Like, like I said, I hadn't, I hadn't caught it. A shiny in a while, so I was like, "All right, the that feeling, the you anticipation said you was for coming. An hour. <laughs> the anticipation was coming. No, but I've had my Go Plus going on like at work every single day this week. So, long story short, I went to the post office, and just like last weekend, we were talking about scanners and IVs and all that stuff. Blah blah blah. We go inside, and I just catch the first Hippopotus that was right there at the gym. It's a Hundo. Yeah. So I post in my messenger, yes. and I tag a bunch of people, and I said. Come to the post office right now. 
hundred percent. And I think only one person made it. The other person that was on their way, it despawned before they got there. Oh, the agony. Yes. Uh, you see, now, if he was using a scanner, he would have known exactly when it would despawn. He could have saved himself a trip. I'm just kidding. Exactly, Don't do right? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it was it was so fun to like, and like, you know, I was just like, it's at the post office. Get here now. Those that got there. Dude. In a, t- in a people power. Timely manner. That's awesome. They got it. Yeah, so I'm. I mean, no, that, so far awesome. the Sinnoh event's good because I've got a hundred percent hippo potatoes. Nice, nice. All right. Well, let, I, I digress. Let, let me let me review the event. This info is going to be coming from PokemonGoHub.net. Uh, like I said, it started today, the seventh at eight a.m. This is going to be running through Monday, the tenth at ten p.m. This is that new funky time window: eight a.m. to ten p.m. the Friday to the Monday. So interesting that they're tra- trying this out. I like it because uh, I'm up early and up late, so it works for me. Oh, we have increased Sinnoh Pokemon in the wild raids, research, and eggs. Uh, the seven K pool. We thought it was smaller, but it's actually still not that not that big. I thought it was seven. That's what they originally had talked about, but it's actually eleven. And we kind of have this info because. The way time zones work, we have a lot of people that are able to start these events on the other side of the world, and then we get the info by the time it goes live for us. So it's a pool of 11 Pokemon. Now, check this out. Combi, Mantike, Cherubi, Buizel. Okay, not that exciting, you know, for those four. But here's where it gets great. The shiny Pokemon cap- uh, possibilities here. Badoo, Bronzor, Gibble, Ryolu, Hippopotas, Bonsly, Shinx. All shiny potential In that pool, you have a very good chance of getting a Gibble and a Riolu. It's awesome. This is a great pool. We talked about how it sucks when these egg pools are big because you can't have focused hunting. You can't say, oh, shit, I really want to go for the Riolu. I really want to go for the Gibble because you're competing against 50 fucking Pokemon in the pool. This is nice and and shrunk down. I can deal with 11 Pokemon in the pool, even though they're 7K. uh, You know, if you have a super incubator, it's not too bad. Here's the research that you can expect this week or this weekend. Catch five Cricketot, you get a combi. Not too exciting. Oh, my God. Catch five Turtwig, Chimchar, or Piplup, 1,000 Stardust. That's exciting. That's pretty good. Uh, Use a Sinnoh Stone to evolve a Pokemon. You get a Cranidos. That's good. Uh, We all know how good Rampardos is. Hatch five eggs, you get a Sinnoh Stone. Eh, Not that exciting. Here's the one you want. Win a raid. Hippo Potatoes. This is that shiny, you know, possibility that was released for this event. Riolu and Hippo Potatoes, both potential shinies out of this event. Uh, Bringing in a shiny Lucario to a PvP match is a fucking sweet flex. Definitely awesome. But yeah, what what, what are your thoughts? Can I just chime in real quick? I thought when it said use a Sinnoh Stone, I evolved my Minchino, the shiny one. I was like, uh, you know, I, so I used to Unova Stone. I was like, why didn't I get that task? And then I look at it and it says Sinnoh. Not... And I was like, are you serious right now? I can't read. <laughs> get out of here. Sinnoh Stones. We talked about how busy February is. This is just one of those events that, that's cooking this weekend. Next weekend, we have the Valentine's event. The following weekend, we have Community Day. We've got a bunch of shit mixed in in the middle, raid hours, all that kind of stuff. There's a lot going on. Let us know if you get that that shiny Riolu. I think that's really the the uh, the gem of this event because that's uh, like I said that you know bringing a, a shiny Lucario into PvP is a is a fucking sweet flex and uh, would be really cool. Adam, Pokemon Day. We talked about what could potentially come from Mewtwo Strikes Back Evolution release. And I called now, it. We thought this was. Dude, we've been talking about this shit for months because we were expecting this to come to the States as a fathom, like, in theater event in November. That's typically when, you know, the movies in Japan will come out in, like, July, and then we see them in November. Same, you know, that's what we saw with The Power of Us and, um, you know, I Choose You. This never came to the theaters. So we we're like, what the hell? And we got Armored Mewtwo during that time, October, November last year. But it was like, why are we getting this? There's nothing that correlates it. It was kind of weird. So now, February 27th is is Pokemon Day. They they celebrate this day because that's the day that red and green came out in Japan back in 96. And it's also the day this year that Mewtwo Strikes Back Evolution is coming to Netflix. So instead of signing a deal with Fathom for theaters, they signed a deal with Netflix to bring the movie there. 
So we have a new event coming to Pokemon Go. And again, in addition to all the shit we talked about last week. So I want to break it down. And Adam, I need you to contain your excitement for Woo. the stuff that I'm about to share because it's very, very exciting. Are you ready? Hold on. Let me get my, my game face on. <sighs> okay. All right. Good to go. Tuesday the 25th at 1 p.m. PST to Monday, the March 2nd at 1 p.m. PST. So we still, you know, end of the month stuff. Pikachu and Eevee with party hats in the wild. Okay, cool, cool. I'm super excited. Bulbasaur, Charmander, and Squirtle with party hats in 7K eggs. Kill me now. Armored Mewtwo with Psy Strike in five-star raids. I'm actually excited because I was ready for it. I expected this. <laughs> I only have one. The coolest part of this whole shit clone Pokemon. So that's cool. Yes. All right. So this is where it gets exciting. This is the best part of the event. So the clone Pokemon were part of the laboratory experiments when where Mewtwo was created in that lab. And we saw in the movie, you know, the original movie, this is a remake. You know, the evolution version is the, the remake in, with 3D animation and all that. But in the original Mewtwo Strikes Back, we saw this lab. We had Venusaur, Charizard, and Blastoise as clone Pokemon. And the way that they distinguished their clone Pokemon is they almost had, like, tattoo markings on their face, like Mike Tyson-style tattoos. Really fucking cool. So clone Pokemon are coming to Pokemon Go in four-star raids. This is pretty cool. How will they distinguish them? Will it just be, like, a little symbol like the Shadow Pokemon, will you actually see the markings on the Pokemon skin? I totally hope so. Uh, but this is cool. Just another kind of checkbox for your collection. Some people are like, God, another thing to collect? Yes. That's what this is all about, fucking collecting. Are we going to have more space? No, probably they not. Give us, they just they gave us give 500 us like, more spots. They, no, they should just give us <laughs> 10 extra spaces just so we can hold all these you got party Pokemon uh, Home BS. coming. Pokemon Home is coming. Okay, good. Whew. Even though it's not, even though it's a one-way street, even though it's a one-way street. But oh, and Clone Pikachu will be photo bombing your ghost snapshot shots, which is pretty exciting. That's kind of cool. Remember they did that for Detective Pikachu also. Another really cool feature of this event: two special trades a day. So over the weekend of Valentine's Day, so the previous week, you're going to have the friendship event. So you're going to be able to build up your friendship, save on Stardust, and then you're going to be able to do double the amount of special trades per day that week, the 25th through the March 2nd. So make sure you start, you know, planning this now and lining all that shit up because it'll be worth it. But wait, there's more. A raid day featuring Nidorino and Gengar. But wait, there's more. Wearing party hats. <laughs> what the fuck? Like More party hats. No, no. Sunday, March first. They're getting way too carried away. I know. With this. I know it's not. I know it's not February. But Sunday, March first, from two to five local time. Gengar with Lick Psychic, which is a good move set, in four star raids. Nidorino in two star raids, both wearing party hats. <sighs> Up to five raid uh, free raid passes, like they typ typically do, one at a time as you spin. Fucking bullshit. It's cool that they're doing the Nidorino Gengar connection, just like, you know, like the, the original game title screen. That That's exciting. But the party hat thing is, it's fucking played, man. It's, I'm, I don't know. I'm excited I'm, for Pikachu I, I'm Libre. So over don't get it. me wrong. Like, Eevee deserves it. Yes. And the ability to not evolve, that would be cool. I hope that all the evolutions <sighs> don't get it. I hope it's just like Bulbasaur. Well, yeah, or just like Weedle, you know? Wormble. I just. I get why they put Nidorino and Gengar, but like, can we not have the party hats? I know. And give know. us shiny it's Gengar really and raids and give us shiny Nidorino. Oh, like uh, give us a reason. Pikachu, Eevee, Bulbasaur, Charmander, Squirtle with party hats can all be shiny, but I don't know, man. I don't care it, that they can be like shiny. I don't want them. Another fucking party hat, man. Why? I don't know. I don't, I don't know. You know what no, it is? It's, it's probably like getting this stuff approved. They probably got this, like, blanket approval, like, hey, you know, from the Pokemon company, like, any Pokemon you want to put a party hat on, go ahead. So they're just fucking running with it. <laughs> they're like, hey, we're allowed to do this. We might as well exploit it. Stop. And, uh, Please stop. Yeah. They're, they're, they're going From a consumer standpoint, 
Stop. All right, I don't. Seg- segway time. Speaking of exploits. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people over the last week and a half with Go Battle League have been Oh, just get out and walk. Just walk. Uh, just Stop complaining. Not, just well, walk. Yeah, not about walking. Not about walking. <laughs> about latency. About lag, right? And I've lost a shit ton of battles to lag, and it always seems that the lag is on my side. You know, I could be in fucking Wi-Fi with gigabit and whatever. And I always get fucked. So apparently there is more to the story here. And uh, you can't take it too far because the amount of people that were probably savvy to this is very small. But unfortunately, as the media covers it, including us, it gained some steam. So this is what would happen. And let me explain the exploit first. Start a match in the title, in the screen where, you know, the actual versus screen where you see your opponent's name, you would Put your phone into airplane mode. It would take about two extra seconds to connect into the match. But once the match started, your opponent is just sitting there chilling, not moving. And you can just tap, tap away and do damage and do damage and do damage and literally play out the entire match in airplane mode. The match is still connected because the other person has Internet. But the devices aren't necessarily speaking to each other, but you're able to do that damage to the point where you can literally just work someone's power, you know, their their hit points all the way down to zero and just knock them out. And they never even had the ability to move. So you would you would literally just be frozen. And this has happened to like people I know that are reputable and and all that stuff. It's definitely happened to me. Because I've sat there at my at at work on my break and I'm like, hmm, this is weird. Why is is it frozen? Like I was like, I have connection. So Alfindiol, he is the uh, he's a t- tournament manager for Go Stadium. Shout to him because he actually made a video where he did this. So he put his own name out on the line to say like, "Look, I, I apologize to my opponent," but he was able to replicate the exploit because people were like, "Oh, it's fucking bullshit." Even Niantic Indigo jumped in on Reddit and was like, "Hey, we can't really make sense of it." So Alf. Shows us how the, this, the the exploit works and just literally mops the floor with this guy because the other guy can't even fucking move. And the, the funny thing is he actually the other person who he played since he posted the video reached out to him and they had a conversation of saying like, yeah, that was me. I know I'm Twitter famous now, blah, blah, blah. But the shit was real. So at that point, it was like irrefutable evidence that there was a major, major, major issue. And what ended up happening was that night. At midnight, Eastern, Niantic Support puts out a tweet and says, hey, we're taking Go Battle League offline. Right away, you guys got to understand how serious a decision that is. That one of the most popular mechanics of the entire game right now that has people talking and buzzing and active, they pull it. That's a huge deal right then and there. Yeah, I can't. I can't tell you how many times I like still, even though I knew it was shut down, I still hit like battle to try to battle. Oh, sure, sure. So they say in the tweet that hey, we're pulling this down for maintenance. It's going to be sixteen to twenty four hours before we get this back online. So we were like, holy shit, they're listening. They're actually going to do something about this. And this was at midnight. So at around 7 p.m. Eastern, so 17 hours after they went offline, they said 16 to 24 hours they were going to be down. Like 17 hours they were down, they come online, and not only do they come back online, but Niantic Support puts out a tweet and says, hey, just so you know, we resolve the issue with airplane mode, and if someone goes into airplane mode, they'll be disconnected for the, from the match. So they actually fixed the bug, addressed it and cleared the air. And I was like, holy shit. Within 24 hours of like this irrefutable evidence that Alf put out. And I'll link to his video um, that so because you got to see it. It's, It's incredible. He just does it. It just works. But within 17, you know, 17 hours after they go down, it's back up and running, which is phenomenal. Now, there seems to be another bug happening right now. Unfortunately, where when you get a, like a weak connection message, when that message goes away and your phone actually reconnects to the server, uh, there is a delay in allowing you to start attacking again. So 
people are experiencing this weird lag issue in the middle of matches. Uh, it's not related to the airplane mode thing, but it is listed on the known issues page. So I'm going to put a link to the known issue page. So it's worth keeping an eye on it. We, we used to talk about this all the time uh, when we first started Lured Up because... You know, if you remember back in when the game first started, 2017, this game was fucking buggy as hell. Yeah, and, there was a know, lot of issues. Yeah, there was a lot of shit. So we, we used to keep like an eagle eye on it. I got to say, man, Niantic fucking nailed it with taking yeah, the thing off. Yeah, here we are giving them crap about party running. hats on Nidorino. And I know. They're, they're in the background like, <laughs> but we're doing such a good job. I know. I know. <laughs> so, but really, though, kudos to Niantic for. for making the decision to pull the system offline, directly address the issue when it's resolved, and get out there ahead of it, which was Yeah, which communication was, really, was really on cool. point. Dude, they're, they're fucking doing everything right, and you've got a lot of except issues the party the, that have happened in the game, except for party hats. A lot of issues that have happened in the game in the past, and it's like, you know, you would never know, like, what the hell is going on, and it's just, they're, they're so responsive, the communication is there, and... You know, all the battlers are like, yeah, it's because we fucking yell the loudest. That's why, you know, we're so vocal about our issues. And I'm like, dude, because more so than any other segment, I would think of this game, the Raiders, the Grinders, the Shiny Hunters, you know, anything like that, the battlers are the most passionate. I said it, you know, just they are because they're just very, very in tune with the game. Uh, and when the shit ain't right, it's do or die Cobra Kai for them. You know what I'm saying? So it's like they really... They really care, but kudos to fucking Niantic for uh, for making this shit happen. It's awesome. They did an amazing, amazing job. So go, go Battle League's up and running. I haven't really experienced too much of that mid-battle lag stuff. I know a lot of people have, but you got to remember, stakes are low right now. It's still the preseason, so my recommendation, just play cool. You know what I'm saying? Like, if just you don't have want fun. to... Yeah, just, well, of course. And don't waste course. the raid pass. Don't that's, waste the that's use it what for I was your party say. hat nonsense. Use it for yeah. the nonsense. <laughs> use it for a, a tier two party hat Nidorino <laughs> with no special move set. Just <laughs> oh God. don't do it. Don't, don't do it. Oh. Yeah, vote oh, with your but, wallets. Just don't do it. Yeah, yeah. no, but it, it's look. Just don't. Do I it. want all these fucking problems. I'm happy that we're having these problems because I want all these problems to come out before March first. Because March 1st is when season one starts and we want this shit to be, you know, as, you know, the, the girls at PVP say, fucking tightened up before the real deal starts on March 1st. So hopefully they'll get all this shit worked out. And I'm confident because they're doing, you know, they're they're moving all the pieces in the right place and, uh, you know, communicating about it. So really cool. So make sure you check out the known issues page, you know, so that way if something's happening to you. And you check on that page and it's there. You don't think you're like the only crazy person in the world. Like you can actually see, yes, this is an actual issue in the game. So kudos to Niantic. Very, very good fucking job. All right, Adam, uh, how you been doing with, with uh, Team Go Rocket? You still on that grind? Yeah. I just need to do six charge moves and then I can go into the next part of the quest. So new shadow Pokemon have been added to the game. Whenever they do this, I, I, I'd assume that Every month when the Giovanni loop kind of rolls over, they're going to be not only dropping new shadow Pokemon in, but changing up the Pokemon that the team leaders use. And we all know that the first Pokemon that the team leader use can be shiny. So here we go. Arlo now starts with Mawile. So Mawile can be shiny shadow. Cliff starts with Pinsir. Sierra starts with Beldum. So Mawile, Pinsir, and Beldum now available as shiny shadow Pokemon. The Grunts, non-shiny, but they've added Vulpix, Execute, Ammonite, Mistrevis, and Carvana. I didn't know this, and I might have missed a Pokemon last month, but apparently Giovanni's decoys use a different pool of Pokemon. So Bellsprout, as a shadow Pokemon, only available this month as a decoy lead, a decoy grunt. I've always skipped the decoys. I've never done a fucking decoy battle. I've always just ran and moved on to Giovanni. Now that I know that they're going to they're using an exclusive Pokemon that I can get, I can only get the Bell Sprout like that, you know, th this month, I'll do them. Um but GoHub has has updated all of their leader guides already for the February loop so you can see what to use with Mawile, Pinsir, Beldum. In my opinion, it seems a little easier. It seems like they've they've kind of made things a little bit easier when it comes to the team leaders. I was able to 
clear Sierra out with just Lucario. Like I didn't even have to pull my Lucario out. I was able to do the whole the whole thing. Uh, Terry Wolf sent me a message also saying the same thing. I was able to wipe the, Sierra's entire team with just Lucario. So check out the guides on GoHub and, you know, let us know how you guys do if you get those shinies because uh, the shiny shadow Pokemon are coveted. That's a that's a pretty rare and unique one, and it requires you to, you know, to put in some work in order to get it because you got to, you know, you got to go through the fucking the ringer to get your rocket radar and all that stuff. You got to remember, too, there's a there's a medal for defeating Giovanni. And I think silver is five times and gold is 20 times. So that gold one, I think think it's 20, would be 20 months long to get gold there. So you're not going to want to miss out any months of doing this loop. So be prepared to take out the leaders because they're going to be standing in your way to Giovanni every single month, month in, month out, with a whole new group of Pokemon. Pokemon Go Hub has you covered. See, the question is, when are they going to give us back those old Pokemon that they were using at the beginning? I don't know, man. Maybe not. Maybe it'll be like a shiny or a shadow Delibird situation where the shit just doesn't come back because it's not like they're using like rare or exotic Pokemon or anything. You know, it's like they're just rotating. So, yeah, maybe, well, maybe those Pokemon will just come out in the regular pool, you know, over time. But I miss the fucking sh- the shadow Delibird, man. I'm so mad. So, so mad. You don't have one? No, dude, I couldn't find one. I literally couldn't find one. It wasn't that I was avoiding the grunts. I literally just could not find one. Suck. Sure. And you can't trade shadow Pokemon, so it's like I'm fu- I'm on Beat Street. Hate that shit. Well, I can trade you a purified one. Well, that's not the same, Adam. <laughs> <laughs> well, to be honest, I haven't purified any of my shadow ones yet. Man. I don't know if I ever will. They're too heartless. All right, Adam. I think we're I think we could take a little breaky break. Um you know, we had we had a little bit of news there, so let's take a little quick break. When we get back, uh, we're gonna do this tornadoes raid guide and battle party. I have some miscellaneous news, a listener email, and uh, then we're gonna poke the bear a little bit. And we've had an awesome, awesome conversation going on Twitter, so you guys can follow up and and uh, get involved over the next week or so. But Let, let's take a break. All right, guys, we'll be back right after this. I am fucking refreshed. You refreshed? Oh, jeez. I just <laughs> dumped water all over me. I was like, I was getting heated about the party hats. Jeez. <laughs> oh, it's like a flash dance. <laughs> all right, guys. A little housekeeping really quick before the back half of the show. This podcast is powered by Patreon. Please check ours out over at patreon.com slash Pokemon Professor, where you can support this show for as little as $1 a month. And that $1 will get you access to our patron-exclusive Discord, which is a fantastic place filled with fantastic people. You know it is. I want to give a huge shout-out to our show supporter tier patrons. Brittany, Jay, James, Matt, M. Pitts, Terry, David, Chris, Sydney, The Noise, Harry, Pokey, Nabbot, Purple Pancakes, Them, Gearsby, Bang, and Lady Goobly Meat, Go Ranger, Matt, The Phoenix, Baker Boy, Jolt Switch, Alex, The Illustrious Overseer, Jason, Matt from Kentucky, Paul, Justin, Val, Monica, PJ, Trainer Dex, Jay, Will, Augmented Naturally, and new from this week, Talon. With a very generous pledge, thank you, Talon, for uh, for joining up. Talon is the man. That's really great. He's he's the one that helped that helped me raid some tornadoes. That is so awesome. Hour. That's so awesome, Talon. We really appreciate your support and uh, welcome to the Discord, man. It's been great to have you. Uh, also, special thanks to Malcolm for joining at the Discord tier. Thank you so much. And always special thanks to our executive producer Paul Bot for his awesome awesome support and patronage we appreciate you guys so much Uh, if patreon isn't your thing there's still a few other ways you can help us out if you're listening on youtube you can subscribe to the channel turn on notifications and if you're listening via a podcast service like apple podcasts you can take a moment to leave us a review all right adam so we got this tornadoes raid guide and battle party here 
And I was thinking about the whole battle party thing and the jingle and this and that. And we haven't done one without Melissa, and it feels kind of fucking weird. So I figure at least for this week, we'll let our community handle it for us this week. What do you think? All right. All right, guys, take it away. Battle party! Woo! Battle party! Woo! Woo! Yeah! Okay, Tornadus Raid Guide and Battle Party. Whenever I have a raid question or a raid guide need, I love going to g2g.media. So we you know we had the crew from Gaming Together Media on a couple weeks back. Awesome website. What they do is they take and they take Pokemon Go Hub, Poke Battler, and Game Press, and they list side by side, and you can toggle between them to see the lists that each of those sites provide. And for the most part, they're very similar. Some might have a different lead Pokemon as the best counter, some, you know, but you get to see three completely separate takes. You know, you've got Poke Battler, which is exceptionally technical and, you know, by the data. You've got Pokemon Go Hub, which, you know, sometimes seems to like put stuff that people are going to have to make it a little bit more accessible. And Game Press is like kind of in the middle because they, they run, you know, Sims and have a lot of data too. So they, they kind of, it's this awesome aggregate, this awesome blend. So I put together a list here that we'll get to in a second that kind of takes a look at all three destinations. And that's why I love going to g2g.media for uh, my raid guide stuff. But Tornadus, this is the incarnate form. You gotta remember, the uh, forces of nature all have two forms. The incarnate form is what we have right now. It's a flying type legendary. It's weak to ice, rock, and electric. This can be duoed under the right conditions. Uh, trioed pretty pretty easily. Uh, four people, you're golden. 100% uh, catch, 1911 at level 20 or 2389 boosted in windy weather. So again, those numbers, 1911 or 2389. The fast moves it can learn, Air Slash and Bite. Air Slash and Bite are both fast charging moves as far as, you know, when, how often you're going to have to face the, the, your, the, the boss firing off charge moves. So just be aware of that, that, you know, you're going to have to, if I don't, do, do you dodge? No. Nope. Do you dodge when you? All right, why, why would you dodge when you could just get hit with <laughs> a charge attack and well, lose your Pokemon? Well, if you're duoing, Pokemon? sometimes you need to, but I don't fucking do it. I just fucking mash Ain't on the Ain't nobody got and, time for that. Ain't nobody got time for that. But uh, charge moves are Hurricane, Hyper Beam, Grass Knot, and Dark Pulse. Not terrible, terrible threats here, but Grass Knot could do some damage depending on your counters. Okay, here's the, here's the list I put together. Raikou. Thundershock, Wild Charge. I put Raikou at the top of the list because Raikou, uh, pretty much any electric type Pokemon here is not going to be susceptible to any of the charge move attacks that Tornadus is going to have. So you're going to be have a really good balance, especially for a lead. Rampardos. Now, I think it was Poke Battler that put Rampardos first. Other sites, or, or one of the sites had Rampardos first. It was like this one between Raikou and Rampardos was up and down, but Rampardos with Smackdown and Rock Slide, the problem is it will get fucking wrecked by Grass Knot. So you got to be aware of that. Magnezone with Spark Wild Charge, Zapdos with Thundershock Thunderbolt, uh, Terrakion, it's a great time to use Terrakion, Smackdown, Rock Slide. Everyone's got Tyranitars, Smackdown, Stone Edge. Uh, some alternate Pokemon you could use, Electivire, uh, Manoswine. Um, so you have some diversity here, but the electric types, you know, it, it's electric and rock pretty much seem to be the best because you're going to have a little bit of tankiness in there. Uh, ice, maybe the Manoswine to give you some give you some tankiness, but uh, I would I would lean towards the electric. So I, I've got a, a little bit of a diverse group here. I'm going to be bringing two Tyranitar simply just because I have very strong Tyranitars fully maxed out that are, you know, have the right move set. A Rampardos, Magnezone. I'm going to bring Terrakion just because I haven't had the opportunity to really use it yet. And a Raikou. So two Tyranitar, Rampardos, Magnezone, Terrakion, Raikou. Pretty diverse. What do you got? I am going to bring another 100% squad, which is Jeez. completely out of the norm. I'm going to be using a... <laughs> Cloyster, a Glaceon, a Jolteon, an Electivire, a Golem, and my Mamoswine. So you're 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 a little off meta here when it comes to uh, 
to your party, but I guess because they're all yeah, it's the difference and... between them dying in one shot of the charge yeah. attack and then not. Um, and I choose to get knocked out. <laughs> Just get wiped. <laughs> as long as I can use stab attacks and get get the damage in, I think we're good. Well, you know, if if you build an actual party, like in you know, not choose them one by one while you're in the lobby. If you actually build a party out. So when your team wipes, you can easily just max revive and jump right back in. It, it's it's something like 16, 17 second turn. So, you know, if you've got others that you're raiding with, you should be fine. But I like it. You Cloyster's a good lead because Cloyster's got a little bit of tankiness to it, you know? So that's good. Cloyster's probably my favorite to use in PvP and in the gyms. It's just ridiculous. I like Cloyster shiny. Uh, but let us know what you guys are using. Um, tag us and uh, use hashtag battle party to let us uh, see what you guys are using for Tornadus. All right. We got some miscellaneous news to cover here in an email before we get into our spicy conversation. It's, it's not as spicy as last week, but it's it's still it's still hot sauce level. It's it's it's, you know, 100,000 Scovilles hot. I really don't know how fucking hot that is, but it's still pretty hot. All right, miscellaneous news. We had our two experimental events this week. Spotlight hour on Tuesday, the 4th, and the <coughs> mystery bonus hour on Thursday, the 6th, <coughs> yesterday. Okay, spotlight hour. It was Onyx. How did it go for you? I had zero expectation, but I opened up my game from the start, and I was only gifted with one spawn. At my work. Okay, but you were at work. But the game was on the entire time, and I was watching it. It's okay. not like... I could see them at the nearby on, like, stops, which are astronomically far away, but I only saw one. Okay. So, I was out playing in Red Bank, and in the first 30 minutes, I only saw two. And now this is Red Bank that has... 35, 40 stops in the downtown that are all within, you know, a five minute walk of each other. And I didn't see shit for the first 30 minutes. And I was like, oh, my God, this event is a bust. I was like, this is crazy. This is absolutely crazy. Posted about it online. People were saying the same thing. I'm not seeing any. This is crazy. Where the fuck are the Onyx? But then the last half hour, like the heat got turned up. They started popping up everywhere, and I saw 22 in the last half hour. So two during the first half hour, 22 during the last half hour, 24 total. There was no increased shiny rate. Of course, people were salty about that. I, you know, you should not expect the increased shiny rate if they do this. I There was someone that was in Red Bank in, in the group that I was kind of walking with for a bit that did get a shiny, but the rate seemed to be the same. But there was good and bad to this event. And again, this is an experiment. So this was my feedback that I shared online. It was underwhelming because it didn't have consistent spawns throughout the whole hour. If the last half hour was, if they brought those spawns during the first half hour, it would have been fucking great if that was consistent through the whole thing. But this is what I liked. So if it was a community day, and I was just walking down the street in Red Bank, it's just going to be spawn after spawn after spawn of the featured Pokemon. So I could just walk in, walk in a straight line and, and get my catches in. But what this made me do was actually use the nearby, find out what stops the Onyx were at, and then jump from stop to stop. So it kind of created this hunt where I wasn't walking my normal walking route, I'm cutting between buildings and like, you know, cutting through walkways and alleyways between businesses to get to the other side of the street without walking around the block. It felt like a 2017 hunt when we would use the footsteps. Remember the footsteps, the footprints? Yeah. Yeah. So I remember that. It felt like that. To I feel me. so old. I know. Right. But th <laughs> you know, that was that was the silver lining for me. I was like, you know what? Even though I didn't get a shiny, even though the volume of spawns wasn't high. It was fun because I felt like I had to always be on the move. So maybe they do that with this. They 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 draw the spawn count isn't like over the top, but 
there's enough to keep people busy. I don't know. But I like that part about it. Uh, but I was definitely underwhelmed with the first half of it. Now, it didn't seem like, you know, after the fact, I saw like Pokey Girl 7 had posted and she was like, I saw 47 fucking Onyx. And I'm like, what? So there was people out there that had spawns. Oh, and magnetic lures really helped, too. Um, someone had dropped a couple magnetic lures and there was clusters, which was nice. Um, well, see, that would have been nice to know. Well, I posted it on our Twitter, <laughs> but... I'm just saying. But, uh, but I, there's no stops by me, so it doesn't yeah. help me. <laughs> but that's the thing. Like, it would have been nice to at least have seen four. That would mean that one spawned every 15 minutes. Yeah. And I... That would have been cool. I didn't have any incense but, either, so know. I didn't run an incense. Same. Same. Yeah. Well... And I wasn't going to spend a yeah, dollar for one. But an incense works like shit if you're not on the move. You know what I mean? It's like when exactly it's when you're exactly. walking. Th- remember, there was some kind of data. I forget what it is, but you know, if you were walking 0. 0.2 miles, it would spawn an incense Pokemon every two minutes or something like that. I don't know, but if you're on the move, would an incense? I think we said it better. was like three minutes, and then it was like six per. Uh, I forget what the number was, but it was like every six or three or six minutes that one would spawn. I don't know. Six minutes if you're standing still and three if you're moving. Yeah, something like Somebody that. Somebody correct something us. Something like that. But it was okay. But make sure you share your feedback on these events uh, with Niantic because, you know, it's important to shape the way. You know, they're listening. They're clearly listening. That was Tuesday. Yesterday, Thursday the 6th, we had Mystery Bonus Hour, Double Stardust. Can't go wrong with Double Stardust. Nothing necessarily changed in the game as far as spawns are concerned. But I did see... Some evolved forms. Two Curlias in the wild. I saw a Hariyama in the wild. Um, you know, so I was seeing some evolution Pokemon. So I don't know if they threw those in or that just happened to happen. But did you get to play it all yesterday? I, I'd say like my house normally gets like one or two rare spawns a day. And I didn't see any during that hour. Mm. Um, but I also wasn't like 100% engaged. Like it was an event worth missing. It's double stardust. Like, you know? like it didn't. It's it not... didn't affect my. It didn't affect my gameplay though. Like, I wasn't gonna go out for it. It doesn't. It was just a nice little like. Oh, I got a cluster. Like, let me clean it up real quick. Yeah, yeah. I ended up picking up forty eight thousand stardust during the event, and I was walking in Mammoth Mall, in Eatontown, New Jersey, which is the fucking worst for Pokemon Go. Shitty service. There's one stop, one gym, like terrible spawns. Um, I was really just p- trying to put in the kilometers to, you know, for the 15K a day, but I was still able to, to you know, pick up f- like 50,000 Stardust, which was which was pretty good, which was pretty cool. Not that I need it because uh, I don't fucking spend it. I just hoard it. But um, I liked it. I, I I would like this event to continue probably more than the Spotlight Hour just because I want the Stardust. I want the XP. I just I just. That's a little bit more motiva- motivating to me than saying like, okay, we're going to have increased uh, Onyx spawns, no increased shiny rate. If they increase the shiny rate on the spotlight hour, then I'm fucking all in. But um, let us know what you guys thought of these events. Make sure you get this, you know, this, inf- this info out and feedback out on social so Niantic can see it because, uh, you know, we can shape the future of these events. That's the point. Uh, the Taiwan Lantern Festival is going on right now, actually. Uh, it's been pretty quiet as far as coverage. Obviously, there's a lot of heavy shit going on in China uh, with the coronavirus and all that stuff. Taiwan is neighboring China, so travel and tourism and all that stuff is is fucked right now in that whole area. So not too much coverage happening with uh, the Taiwan Lantern Festival, but it is going on right now. Uh, this actually came out before we recorded last week, but we didn't mention it. Rhyhorn won the February voting for Community Day. Um, womp womp. Look, I, I wanted Volpix. Adam wanted Volpix. Look. But ugh, it, it's Rhyhorn. I mean, it, it's okay. Rock Wrecker is going to be a good move. But this is coming up on the and 22nd. You want to know why I knew that it was going to win? Because the fucking tasks the were everywhere. I went into the ga- <laughs> no, I went into the gas station. Um, and there's like one of the employees. Um, she also plays. And. I, she goes, did you vote for Rhyhorn? And I was like, no, I only vote for Vulpix. <laughs> and she's like, I, I collected all the Rhyhorns I could find. Rhyhorn's the bomb. And I was like, 
like super casual player. So I was like, all right, that's that's what that's what's gonna well, win. I think from a casual perspective, <sighs> with Rhyhorn not having the shiny released in the game, that was most attractive. And there's more casual players than not. So if they have a new you know, an opportunity to influence a new shiny being introduced, like Dratini has a shiny, Machop has a shiny. Fucking Vulpix has a shiny. You know what I mean? Like, this is an opportunity for a brand new shiny yeah. to get in. That's very attractive to players that aren't necessarily about that grind and they just want to, you know, have new shit to catch. So, uh, but yeah, the, uh, it's going to be February, Saturday, February 22nd. Remember, this is going to be the split time. So if you're in the Northern Hemisphere, 11 to 2 p.m., Southern Hemisphere, 3 to 6 p.m., three hour lures, triple Stardust. So, triple Stardust is always huge. You know, make sure you're, you know, dropping, dropping a star piece this entire for that entire time. It's going to be very, very lucrative for Go Battle League, especially as we get to Ultra and Master League. Got to remember, people are bitching about Stardust when it comes to Great League, and they only have to power their Pokemon up to 1500. Like, think about the the Stardust investment when you have to bring your Pokemon up to, you know, 3500 for Master League. It's going to be very, very expensive. So, um it's a good good idea to start, you know, thinking about that stuff and planning ahead with your Stardust. All right, we have a listener email. This one from Bjorn This Way it says, "What's up, guys? I look forward to your show every week. I usually listen while I get the dishes and laundry done. That's awesome. Uh, I always look forward to it. High point of my week. Just listen to your Poke the Bear segment on spoofing. Here is my two cents." Don't get too bent out of shape about PvP IVs and spoofers or map users tracking them down. Yes, IVs can win matches, but what wins vastly more matches? Experience, prediction, deception, luck, and skill. Even if your opponent has the best weapon, if you can use your weapon better, you win. You know what, bro? You're fucking right. I love it, too. It's so great. And, you know, I I heard this a lot from uh, a lot of experienced PvP players. I think Shagnus jumped in uh, for the battles. They said, look, it's experience that really is going to win these things, even if there is an edge. I get that. And it's a great, it's a great yeah. outlook. I've been using my Arbok recently. Really? And my Arbok that puts in work versus Alteria. Shit. All right. Next part of the email, he says, Pogo is in essence a convergence of real life and a fantasy. Don't be surprised when real life shades of gray creep in. Okay. Pokemon lore is rife with shades of gray. Maybe today you're battling an upstart from Pallet Town. Maybe tomorrow a Team Rocket baddie who stole his Pokemon from the Pokemon Center. Just have fun with it and work hard to get better. Good luck on your 15K a day. I'll try to keep up. Hope to find you in Go Battle League. Dude, thank you so much for the email. That it, It's a great outlook. It's a great fucking outlook. You gotta, yeah. I got to say, it's like... Staying, That's the way to do it. Yeah, man. You know, staying positive about this shit and saying, look, you guys could fucking cheat all you want. Do whatever the fuck you're going to do. I know I'm bringing everything I got to the table, and I'm going to fucking throw down and, uh, you know, come catch these fucking hands because, you know, it doesn't matter how special your IVs are. You know, I'm going to know. I'm going to be counting your fucking moves. I'm going to be switching at the right time. I'm going to be managing my energy and shields. Regardless of whether you have a 0-15-15 Pokemon, if you don't know how to do that, you're still going to catch these fucking hands. So good on you, Bjorn. Appreciate your writing in. Yeah, thanks for writing in. All right, next, we actually got a voicemail from Jolt Switch. Uh, the quality of the audio on the voicemail was a little fuzzy, so I'm not going to actually play it. But he does talk about how the win-loss ratio and how that affects your Go Battle League ranking and how sometimes that may not be the biggest contributing factor. There was a lot of science that was done by Valor Ash and a bunch of other uh, people coming together to test these theories out and how like your gold medals actually affect your ranking and all this stuff. There's a lot of data being collected, but it's a great conversation to ultimately have when we have some more info, because I, I'm i telling you, man, I win consistently. I win three of five, three out of five lately of my set of five, and I'm stuck in rank nine, yeah, same. and I don't fucking move. My ranking does not move because I'm battling people that are pretty even with me. You know, I think at the highest point, my matchmaking rating was like 3,077. And I flirted between the low 3000s and 3077 for like the last 40 fucking matches. I'm just not moving. So I definitely am intrigued to figure out how this ranking system worked because it's it's fucking confusing to me. And uh, we'll have to see how that goes. 
All right, Adam, you ready for a little little hot sauce? I got some hot sauce for you, man. Yeah, let's poke the bear. All right, this is actually a really good one to talk about today because I think we're split on this between you and I. So this is going to be exciting. Yeah, because I have the gotcha and I use the gotcha. All right, so I asked on Twitter. I'll link to it in the description. I ask everyone to get involved. And, you know, when I posted this this morning on Twitter, I think we're up to like 60 comments already. It's been very, very active. Awesome, awesome conversation. This this segment's been great. So this is what I said. Do you use the gotcha the dual catchmon, or a modded Go Plus to auto-catch Pokemon. Do you think auto-catch devices break the spirit of the game and give users an unfair advantage? Is it cheating? It's a common thing. The gotcha is sold on Amazon and GameStops at Target fucking everywhere. There's nothing stopping anyone from thinking this device is 100% legitimate because it's on the shelf. But, per Niantic Terms of Service, third-party accessories are not allowed. So, Adam, <sighs> talk to me here. You used the you used used to have a regular Go Plus, right? Yes. Okay. So but you used that for like a fucking it's year. It's loud. It's loud. Um, what especially the vibration? When I'm, when I'm talking to somebody and trying to sell them a diamond, it is. <laughs> It is very inconvenient for it to be going, and 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 then I hit it nonchalantly. You know, it's inside my you know it's sports coat, but I hit it nonchalantly. But then I catch something, and it's like wah 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 wah. It's it's not professional. Um, whereas the gotcha, it is silent, doesn't make any noise, does the same exact thing. It legitimately does the same exact thing. I'm just not pressing a button when a Pokemon is nearby. So it's not the same thing. It's not the same thing. It disconnects thing. <laughs> just like the Go Plus. It doesn't it doesn't stay connected. It disconnects. But because it's silent, I feel like I lose out a little bit more than the Go the Go Plus okay. because the Go Plus actually would go da 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 and then like let you know that it's not connected. So you're almost alerted by the Go Plus to reconnect. All right, so this. So this, I don't think it's unfair. <laughs> here's here's my problem with it. So I'm fucking, and I've oh, and I'll die on this fucking hill. And I've always been anti gotcha. So it fools the game when you connect it to the game and you're in your settings. It identifies the gotcha or the fucking du- the dual catch mod is even worse because you can connect two devices to it. It thinks that it's a go plus, so it's fooling the game and saying, hey, this is a. You, you are trying to connect via Bluetooth a first-party Go Plus device right now, when in fact you're connecting some third-party device. But as far as the game is concerned, it identifies it as a Go Plus. So th- there's my first problem. Second problem I have with it. It breaks the spirit of the game, in my opinion. And we'll get to, to, to the, the feedback that we received online, and someone does address that specifically. But in my opinion, it breaks the spirit of the game because you're really not fucking doing anything. You're just, it's just happening. There's no. Well, it, has, my thing is, has Niantic come out with a new version, a new legit Go Plus that you can put on silent? Like, I would buy it immediately. I'm sure lots of people would buy it immediately because it's better than the regular Go Plus. I if would buy silent, it immediately. It's better than the Go Exactly, but, but not I'm because not it's carry silent. around the giant, the giant fucking Pokeball. It's, it's because just, it's it's just it's because authorized. That's why I would buy it, not because it's silent. Okay. It's because it's it's accepted. It's it's okay. It's not because of the silence. So, like, there's a need, and and like that's a that's a big thing. See a need, fill a need. I need silence, right? But to be able but to, does it? But I think that Niantic would think it breaks the spirit because you're you're not. I don't know. So I'm gonna I'm gonna read some of the comments here that we received. Uh, shout out to Pokemon Master Holly. She retweeted this. We get a lot of activity from Holly's community. Uh, so if you've come to the show through Holly, thank you guys so much for checking us out. Holly, thank you for the retweet. It really really helps us expand our reach. Okay, 
Jamal Harvey, great member of our community, super awesome and active uh, user of Wayfarer, helps tons of people in the community, says, I am hashtag team gotcha all the way. I can keep my eyes on the road when I'm driving, and it also allows me to catch and spin while I'm playing Ingress. Multitasking is the best. All right. Okay. IV Pips from PokéNav. I could get pretty triggered by this, since the gotcha is equivalent to holding down the Go Plus button. I believe it accomplishes the goal of the Go Plus better than the original, both in features, safety, and battery life. I think the Pokéball Plus is a partial admission to this, but I'm waiting for TPC to release something equivalent with auto-catch, and then I believe there won't be many more disagreements over it. This is what we were just talking about. I would buy one in the fucking yep. heartbeat if it was if it was Niantic approved. The only reason I don't is because it's not Niantic approved. Well, Niantic, yeah, <laughs> respawn. Get on that. But the, again, I don't think they will. I don't think they will. Uh, Ash Ketchup says I have both Go Plus and Gotcha, but do not use either of them anymore for the last year. I didn't feel the catches were earned, but that's my personal experience and viewpoint. I'm not excluding future use, but for now, I like to play without external devices. So that's an interesting perspective. He has both, but didn't feel like they were fair catches. That's interesting. Uh, here we have uh, Gear Alsted says, no, it's not cheating. I don't even understand what it means to cheat in this game, except the supposed airplane mode in Great Go Battle League. Everything else is fine, including spoofing. All right. Hey, man, I'll give a voice to the people that are pro spoofing. I don't give a fuck. It's what they want to do. But there's a lot of people out there that feel this way, so it's important to to, to bring it up and, and give those people a voice on this platform because they're that's they are communicating. I am risen, friend of the show, says this is oh this is the one I was talking about how it's in direct uh, response to my spirit of the game thing. It says I believe the spirit of the game should be defined by each person. I do not have the right to tell anyone how they should play any game just because I do it one way doesn't make the only way or the right way. Noted. Point Whoa. point taken. That's deep. It is. I mean, but again, we're talking terms of service here. And again, I'll die on that fucking hill, and I may be alone. Joe B, the underscore Joe underscore B on Twitter says, since it's against terms of service to use third-party devices or modded devices, the question is answered right there. And I was like... Yeah, but if you put a rubber band around the, the Pokeball Plus... That auto catches or auto spins the stops, correct? Okay. I, I'm happy you said that, Adam. Was that yes or no? It, does it, it work? Yes, it does. Okay. okay. Dr. Tardis. So, there. Dr. Tardis. Hold on. He says he posts a picture of his Pokeball Plus with the strap tightly secured around the button, holding it down. Again, you could do it with a Go Plus 2. People would, back in the day, they would take like a quarter or two quarters and sandwich the button closed and then rubber band it, whatever. But he says... There's no real difference between a gotcha and my Pokeball Plus doing this. And he shows it. Preach. Preach. You ready for my response? Because this was my fucking mic drop fucking response. I said, there is a big difference. Where there isn't a difference is with the trainer that's using a gotcha or a Pokeball Plus with a fucking rubber band around it. The devices are doing two completely different fucking things. It's the attitude of the trainer, in my opinion, that's the same between someone using a gotcha or fucking faking it with a device. It does fucking trigger me. So great conversation, guys. This was a fucking good one. Like <laughs> it, it's there's so many people, especially the grinders. And Terry Wolf wanted to chime in on this. We got to get Terry Wolf to get a fucking PC that can connect to our calls here so we can get him on the show because he really wanted to talk about this. But a lot of the grinders and the heavy duty XP, you know, level 40 times 8, 9, 10, and plus, they're all gotcha users. And they always have the thing running 24 fucking 7. And that's how they're able to catch 200, 300,000 Pokemon. I don't have mine going right now. But that's like, it, so? so? <laughs> it's like the murderer is like, I didn't kill anyone right now. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I, it's, it's definitely a great topic. Get involved in the conversation. Let us know what you think. Do you use this shit? There, I remember there being modding tutorials of people that would actually solder their, take their Pokemon Go Plus apart 
and solder it to have an auto spin or auto catch capability. Oh, and a lot of people were also jumping in saying the fucking Pokeball Plus does the same shit. What are you talking about? No, the Pokeball Plus auto spins. Big difference between auto spinning and auto catching. Again, if the Pokeball Plus, a first party thing or a license officially licensed from a third party, but approved thing did auto catching, we would not be having this conversation at all. Because it would be okay. Nope. If they came out with a product tomorrow that auto catches, I would eat fucking crow all day. I'm a fucking vegan and I would eat crow because it's just, it just, it's not approved and it's against terms of service. So spicy conversation. It it splits this podcast because Adam uses the fucking gotcha. And I remember, dude, how much shit did I give you when you first bought that thing? Um, Enough to fill a couple plates for a couple months. I was like, bro, really? I go, really, dude? <laughs> but let, let us know what you think. Where do you stand on this? Do, do yeah, and let me know if I should uh, go back to the Go Plus. I am going to, you know what? Sorry, community. I'm Try to convince for me. all of you right now. Yes, go back to the Go Plus. Just use, the, oh, God. I have an extra Pokeball Plus. I'll fucking mail it to you. Someone convince me. Jeezy Louisey. Oh God. But Adam, I, I think we did it, man. I think I think we I think, I think we, we did, did it. it. <laughs> Enough ranting. We accomplished a long form talk. Yes. Good good stuff. Good stuff. Pokemon Go. But yeah, follow up it. on the uh, on the Poke the Bear segment. I, I really want to hear what the podcast community thinks about the whole gotcha thing because you know <laughs> I, if you were a, a 10 year old kid and you're, you know, Santa Claus is shopping for you at GameStop and you're a Pokemon Go fan and they take that thing off the shelf, what difference do you know? So there's probably so many people out there using this that are, it's unbeknownst to them that it would even be an issue. They're not listening to podcasts. They're not on fucking Twitter. They're just out there playing Pokemon, having a good time using a device they bought. Just like they, you know, you could buy a Game Shark back in the day or a fucking, you know, any of those things, it's like, it's just, you can't avoid it. Like, uh, you know, one of the people that wrote in on, on Twitter said, "There's a, it's just a, oh, Bjorn, uh, who wrote the email. There's, it's just gray area. You know what I mean? It's going to happen. There's going to be this kind of shade of gray creeping into, you know, all these different areas. Can you confidently tell me that if I walked into a store, I could find a Go Plus? Not a Go Plus. You could find a Maybe Pokeball Plus. I this, was at the store today. I should have took a picture because of it. They, they're, they're not available. There was, I should have took a picture I'm of just it. Saying. There was a gotcha right next to a Pokeball Plus. The gotcha was 30 bucks. The go the Pokeball Plus, 50 bucks. If I'm fucking, you know, budget savvy or budget conscious, I'm going to buy the gotcha if I don't know better. It's $20 less. So... Shit, man. It's it's a good conversation. But thank you guys so much for checking out the show. This is uh it's been a fun one. Please get involved with the conversation. Links to everything we talked about are gonna be in the description. Uh you could pick up our Secret League pin from the Secret League store, link there as well. Yeah, and then tag us in the pictures of you wearing yes. it because we want to see you represent the Lured Up podcast and the Professor Network. Uh, info at luredup.com. You can shoot us an email. You can, just like Bjorn did, you can send us a voicemail, text, or picture like Jolt Switch did, 732-835-8639. Check out everything that's going on at the show, luredup.com, pokemonprofessor.com for everything that's going on at the channel. Make sure you connect with us on Patreon, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, Tumblr, TikTok, all that shit. We're everywhere. Uh, we want to hear from you and get you involved. Hope to hear from you guys definitely soon in the future. But Adam, I think that's really officially now all she wrote. Yeah, let me just go connect my gotcha then. Fucking jerk. Keep training, trainers. We'll see you I'm all next week. <laughs>